Here we go. Two zebra patches. I thought this was gonna get rid of it. Hey. <laughs> so, stop that. I am having fun. I have a, just to show you what's going on, I have a Electro, the Epic Electro kit from the new release of Logic Pro. And it's nice and snappy thanks to a Neve compressor on it. Without it, it's not as snappy. And then there's two zebra patches. There's Pissed Zebra. And the mod wheel. Okay, that's one patch, right? And the other, the, the patch I started with, with uh, at the beginning of this was a patch called my Mental Modular which is a tribute to my modular synthesizer, Maxwell, which makes all sorts of cool blippy. You, know, you set the little sequencer to start doing things and you don't know what notes it's playing, but the mod wheel transforms it because with Zebra, you have incredible power on the matrix page, on the synth pages, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, so stay with me. So that you can take this, Okay, so introduction time. Hi, my name is John Skippy Limkul. It is a pleasure to see all of you out there in Zebra land. We are talking about Zebra 2. This is a synthesizer that's actually been out for 10 years. And um, I'm almost embarrassed to say I have not supported it until now. Because A, Yuhi and Urz are through the internet, I've never met him in person, but we're, we're good colleagues. And I have great respect. He's hired me to make factory patches for Ace. I worked on Filterscape, um, all sorts of things from him. I've been a beta tester of all of his plugins. And, you know, I love what he's doing. He, back in the day when there's this transformation between OS 9 to OS X, he was one of the leaders of getting people into the audio unit concept because that's about when audio units came from Logic Pro and uh, everybody was VST. And he's like, it's so easy to convert things into audio unit format. And he did it. And I think he actually hired, was hired by companies for a little while. I don't know for sure. So he created this synthesizer 10 years ago and I have always been intimidated by it. This is one of those synthesizers that intimidates me. It is so deep and there is so much available and you start with these four possible lanes and you click and you have this whole list and it's like, holy cow. And it, you know, beginning of the year, a lot of people have been emailing me saying, dude, you got to do Zebra. It's my favorite synth. I mean, so many people say it's their favorite. And um, so I started working with it and a couple of days, you know, I was working with it, working with it, struggling, struggling. And all of a sudden, boom couple things started to happen and I started to understand a little bit more about the layout and I started to understand more about the different parameters that you have and the way that the modulation is set up it's a little confusing when you're looking at it and there's no labels but these dash 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 and it's very easy to be confused with the synthesizer because there's so much packed you can do so many different forms of synthesis and then you can click here and say no I want this to be routed over to the fourth lane and boom, there it is routed over to the fourth and it's like good lord you're kidding me so it's basically a modular, semi-modular synthesizer built into this really cool interface. And it has a whole bunch of cool 
tools to it. So I have two goals for this video. We are about to release in partnership together. Seth Norman and myself are going to, we did the uh, Meg Serum Mega Wave. He did Toxic Omnisphere for Omnisphere, which was great. Um, we decided to team up and do Zebra. So that way we could do 50 different patches because we each approach kind of the aggressive EDM dance market differently. And the two together is, is great. It's a really cool mix because there's stuff for everybody. Sometimes you just libraries are just pure dubstep. It's you want more. And sometimes libraries are just, you know, epic trance floor themes or whatever it just makes you want to vomit after about 10 of them. So when you put them together, you get a really cool mix and you get the ability to do hybrid stuff where you have a cool trance thing going Right? But at the same time, you could go over here and have something like... You know, stuff like that. So we are releasing Toxic Zebra later this month. And so I want to show you some patches really quickly, just what we're working on. It's totally different than everything in the in the existing universe I've seen for Zebra. Nobody has been able to go in and... Uh... Nobody's gone there. Um, there's other really cool things that we're going to do in this library. I want to show you that, and I want to show you some tricks on getting rolling with Zebra. Um, getting the basics of the flow, some of the parameters you should know about that will speed up your life. We're going to cover tricks and tips for getting around. Um, later, I'm going to do another video making patches so we can make a patch from scratch. And I seriously considered putting these into the library for download so that you buy the library and then maybe, and I went, you know, I'm just going to make it for free. And I'm going to share this knowledge because that's my, my whole business model is sharing knowledge, getting you up to speed with these synthesizers. And then if you appreciate what I'm doing for you guys, you go to my website and you buy the libraries that I create. And it's worked out to be very successful. I'm blessed. And I thank all of you that support my adventures in synthesizer programming and um, awesome. So these are free. And then in appreciation, come to my website, pluginguru.com. I have a whole bunch of libraries for Omnisphere, all the native instrument stuff for uh, Break Tweaker. I got a library that makes Break Tweaker usable, um, all sorts of things like that. So please come to my website, check everything out. So let's do this. I'll show you the patches at the end, okay? I want to get into making sounds. Let's start with the initialize that comes with uh, Zebra. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. For one thing, basically, Zebra is laid out with four possible lanes that come down here like four channels in a mixer. And what you put into this lane will determine what it's going to do synthesis-wise. There's standard oscillators. There's four of them. So you can have right across here four analog oscillators. There's two noise sources, which are really cool. Uh, the noise could be, let's see, let's, if you double click, you turn things off. Oh, let's do some conventions, just to make life easy. Um, notice when you select these, a little green box goes around them. And when you get to where you have a big list of a whole lot of stuff going on, right? So now when you click on these, it highlights, but you know it will move to show you like that. But there's a trick that I really like. If you control click right here, you can say select it on top. And what that means is whatever you choose, it will stick it to the top of the synth list. So that right there will save you a huge amount of having to scroll if you start getting anything more than four or five blocks in a patch. It's really nice to be able to just click and you know whenever you click something, it's going to be on the top of the list. Even when you have four lanes of stuff going on, if I have something over here and I have something over here, that's not going on over here. Where if I ever I click, it, it shows up at the top of the list. So that's cool number one. Cool number two. If you, uh, over on this side, if you write, uh, let's see, maybe right in here. Yeah. If you click in the, like the metal plate area, anywhere in here, um, there's two types of graphics in plugins. Let me share with you. 
as I drink my homemade, this is, uh, I do juicing. I love juicing. So this is apple, orange, and a little bit of lemon. It's just great. So there's two types of graphics and plugins. There's bitmapped, which means it, the plugin is the size that it is, and that's all it is. And then there's vector graphics. And vector graphics are able to be resized. And Yuhi has always done Uhi. I think it's how you actually say it if you're European, but I say Yuhi. So if it's wrong, I'm sorry, but that's how I've always, nobody's corrected me. So there's the cool thing with vector graphics is you can click and make things much larger. <laughs> so large, um, Seth has a 4K TV. <laughs> he puts this to cinematic and puts it on his TV and it's just huge and awesome. So you can do that. But if you right click, you can choose it to be a larger or a smaller interface. Now, good luck programming when it's like that. But if you set it to large, it gets a lot easier to use. So remember, right click on this bar and you can choose. Or you can also over here and may auto scroll or select it on top. Also for this side, too. So that way, if you go over here to the envelopes and you're working on something and you assign something to an envelope. And then you go over here and you say there's going to be envelope two. Boom. Um, if I, if I select the parameter to change it, it automatically will move that to the top of the screen too. Because this is envelope one. So when I change this parameter, boom, see how it changes. So right there, those two on this side, you can set it. And on this side, you can set it separately. But it's really nice because that way, whenever you're changing your parameter, you know, when you look over here, it's at the top of the screen. Okay. So those are important to realize. On the uh, synthesis page, let's go back to our init to start over again because I've kind of messed things up. And I'm going to go to the guru init because I like how it starts. I have it set up so on this matrix page, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, the mod wheel is already set up for vibrato but turned off. So if you bring this up to max, you got nice vibrato if you want it. But I leave it at zero to start with because usually that gets used for warping sounds and changing quality of sounds and all sorts of things. Okay. On the global page, this is a confusing thing because a lot of patches are set to arpeggiate and there's no, on the ARP sequencer page, there's no on and off. Right here is where you choose the arpeggiator to turn it on. And now, now you're arpeggiating. So if you want the arpeggiator, that's how you turn it on. If you want it to be polyphonic, and then down here, you have how many voices is it? And pitch bin, you can have it up or down 24 semitones. Smoothing the attacks, sometimes you want that off. And sometimes you want voice drift off if you want it to be just nailed pitch wise. Um, these are two things that soften it. You gotta realize, um, I saw, you know, I've asked Urz if he wanted to have a video interview with me. And he's shy and said, no, I don't think I want to do a video. He, I could send him questions and he'd reply or something like that. But he recently did a video interview with Sonic State, which is great. And when he created Zebra, um, the virus was huge. Access virus was what was used on everything. And he got one and he really liked it, but it was a little too aggressive. And so the, the goal of Zebra was to be a little bit more of a softer complement to the virus kind of, I mean, just dance is redefined because of the virus synthesizer, no doubt about it. Even the stuff you get for a lot of the sample libraries, even Nexus is very much, a lot of those samples come from viruses. So the virus was huge and it's time and it, it still is a really incredible synthesizer. A lot of the newer software synths are getting close to being able to do what it does and more. So anyway, I just lost my earbud. So this is kind of designed in some ways to be able to be soft and warm and fuzzy. So it kind of defaults naturally to that. And the, and the voicing, um, Howard did a really great job with the voicing, but it kind of tends to be a little bit more of the softer, emulative, analogy synth kind of not, not the aggressive dance stuff that so many other synthesizers are doing, which is why this library is coming out now. It's good timing for that. So you have smoothing, you have uh, transposing the entire patch. So if you make something, you go, oh, I wish it was an octave lower. Just go up here and set it to minus 12, and now it's an octave lower. Here's your glide for. 
and you can choose whether it's time or rate based. Okay. Um, right here is the effect section. So right out the bat, right here is where you have, and my, my default guru init has EQ reverb and delay set up. So if you want to use a little EQ to sweeten the sound, you can. If you want a little reverb, there you go, and delay. Now the delay, right here you click to choose whether it's two taps or four taps. At two taps, it's these top two left and right. And one couple of really cool things is you can pan them and set one, like the quarter notes right now, right? And they're tight. But the ratio allows you to actually vary like that one to the minus and so now it's stereo. So use ratio just a little bit on each one in opposite intensities and you'll get a wider stereo field from the delays. Okay. So if you go to the reverb, there's both normal reverb. Let's turn this up. And metal verb, which sounds very similar. Now, a couple things. Right here are your two main parameters for the reverb. Range is what would normally be considered size in a reverb. So if you set this to like this, it's a much larger size. And then here's feedback is should be time or the decay. So if you want to decay for a long time, feedback, think of delays and feedback makes it, as well, feedback on reverb will make it ring out a long time, so. And then right here is damp. And with zero dampening, it it's really bright. You can hear it get darker. It has modulation abilities, which allows the reverb to kind of move around, which is great. So I usually leave it like this, but if you don't want any, and you want it just to be more static. Okay. Okay, so got that stuff to play with. If you want to add additional effects, you have a whole list. Compressor is really great for making sounds bigger and aggressive. Uh, there's filters, which can go through a whole list of the different filters, just like in the synthesizer engine over here. You have the same filters. You've got the ability, if I turn this off by saying remove, right click on something and you'll see remove. There's distortion. Um, there's three lanes. And the reason for that is simple. I mean, you can have one lane here and go right here and instead of main, say bus one. So here it's like chorus. So you can have this be a bass sound. And we won't hear it until I turn up the return. So now the bass sound is not going through the reverb, only that brighter synth part. Okay, so the multiple abilities like this are great. If you want, you could picture it like this and then say route this into lane one. And actually I have to keep it. And I say bring in lane two right here. So now it's because I selected you, you have to select where you want the input to be. It's kind of confusing. So if you want this to go into here, you don't click this, you click this and you say input two. And now that routes it back in here. Or if I could say, put that back to same. So it goes away. Let's say I want this to go into the reverb. So I'd go to the reverb and I say, bring in lane two here. So now that I'm getting both reverb and delay. So I could set this. See, I got the reverb and delay. So it's a little backwards. So that's basically the concept for how the routing works and how the effects work. And here's your parameters for them. If you do send things uh, by clicking here and saying something other than main for the other two buses, you make sure that you turn up the returns or you won't hear them unless you go down here and right click on this and say lane two right here or right here. Actually, you can do it everywhere. And now this sound is going through these effects. I still have the dry signal available. I could use both if I wanted to do that type of thing. Okay, so that's enough with, <laughs> we got kind of carried away with that. So you have that ability to work with. The synth itself is kind of straightforward. Once you understand 
the layout. You're, you're building it like blocks, like a synthesizer, like my modular over here. If I want a oscillator going into a filter, I go like, like give him my earbud. I, um, then you do that. Um, if you want it to do other things, there's all sorts of additional things. So instead of a couple of tricks out the oscillator that you might not know about, these are really cool tricks. So first of all, it's a single oscillator. Okay. If you go right here, you can choose dual or quad. And that will give you two. Here's detune. Quad is four. And 11, because guitar amplifier should go to 11, and so should unison. So if you want to do the huge unison detune, single oscillator, set it to 11, set detune how you like, go to town. It's easy. Bring up the release. Oh, wait, we're on two, so we want to go to one. You want snappier envelopes? Do this. Bring down sustain. Control how much snap you want. And then bring up the sustain to match your body to the snap. If you want velocity, the velocity curve's a little wonky. Uh, if you go to filter, and let's, now, here's how these work. So when you first call this up, it says none for both of these, and they're dash, dash, dash. These are two cutoff, I thought at first this one's cutoff, and the one to the right would be resonance, but it's not. If you right click, actually, I've, I figured this out by, if, you, if you're ever curious about such things, go over here to the matrix page, and you can click right here, and you can look at the list and you can see what's available and you'll see it's mod depth one, mod depth two. So instead of saying mod depth one and mod depth two, which would be helpful, don't you think? Um, it's instead dash, 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 but that's what it is. So one can be assigned by clicking on it to envelope two. So we can set this and then turn on velocity. And it might seem at this point like it's too dark, right? So go over here and say velocity. And now you have a very velocity sensitive. The velocity of Zebra is really nice when you understand how to use it. And sometimes you have to like, um, it's almost like the two work together to make the, the range wider and more extreme. So by having this do some velocity and doing velocity here, or this is where it gets really exciting once you realize this. This page has uh, 12 modulation sources. These can be anything, changing anything in the synthesizer. And I mean anything, which is another reason why people love this. You can say mod wheel, to the reverb wet and crank this up and so oh I took off my velocity let's bring this back up so we have now by use my mod wheel so you can have 12 things even side chains so that it's relying on something else like an LFO value or so forth but I just usually like say mod wheel Let's have to go to oscillator one and go wave warp so that, so this will actually do the wave warping, which is really cool. So the other thing with the oscillator that is amazing is the wave warping. So let me show you that. This is over here on the oscillator effects. Brilliance. There's this whole list of, there's a warp in Serum, and this is similar to that. Uh, it, it doesn't have, or does it have a sync in here? Yeah, it does have sync, sync mojo. And 
And once you set this up, you can click right here and say mod wheel and go to town. So when I realized that you had all of these, oh wait. So when I realized that you had all of these cool warping abilities, it was, that opened up a whole lot of doors because these sounds. Okay, let me show you another trick real quick. Instead of mod wheel, say, say we've got it to mod wheel. That's cool. I want it to have something else. So if you right click, you get the list again. And let's say the mod map. And this is cool because this can be either something like a standard velocity, like a key curve, key scaling. So if you want to scale something volume wise or so forth, it's very easy to do that. You can draw. You can right click though and say randomize. And by doing this, it will randomize it all over the place. Here, let's give some, these some bottom values. It's, so what this will do now is uh, by each each time I play a note, since it's set to alternate, it's going to go to the next one. So just randomize things like that, and say normalize. It'll give you the full range. So this is a cool way to go through and find out what everything does because it's changing. There's all sorts of cool tools in here to get all sorts of dubstepy, crazy kind of things happening. So that gives you some tips of things to do there. The other thing that's very confusing that takes a minute to understand is that this interface is designed so that there's some information in more than one place. For example, here's your waveform. And a lot of people don't know that you go down here and here's your waveform. And it's actually a table that you can cycle through. You can do this with the wave and it will do it for you. And if you click right here, this is where you choose your oscillator. And if you go to the factory, there's a ton of oscillators. Um, some actually have PDM and motion qualities, which I don't know how they're doing. Others are like this. Now we've been making, especially Seth has been going crazy, just absolutely bonkers crazy. And he's made a whole lot of, uh, <laughs> a Lhasa Raptor and from this. And these are done basically by hand. There's no waveform importing that we can find. But if you take this, Awesome, just awesome, awesome, awesome. So fun. Now, if you notice something, this really irked me. When I choose a new waveform, see my tune is set, my unison is set, everything's set. I like it. I just want to change oscillators. Well, you can't. When you change this, it resets everything. Boom, it's gone. <laughs> the parameters are gone. All that work, all that setting, right? Well, if you read the manual, it's in there. You can set up, let's say 11, D2. Watch this, this is so cool. Each of these parameters, right click and it says lock. Lock that sucker and a big lock shows up on the display. Lock that sucker, lock 11, boom. It has a little tiny lock. Now I can go down here I can go through the list. And those parameters don't reset. I hate it when they do that. So there is a lock. And it happens to be that that lock is available for every knob on the complete interface. You can lock anything you want. It's most important I'm finding on the oscillator page, but there's other places where it will probably come in handy to be able to lock things down. There is no, it'd be nice if there's an unlock all button, but there's not. 
um, you could say unlock, but one at a time. Right click and it's unlocked. So now when I go back, see the reset. So now when I go back and choose something, it's reset again. So the lock is really important to learn about. Right click and off you go. All right, so that's the waveforms. The waveforms are selected here for the oscillators. And there's four oscillators available. So if you one, two, three, and four. Now when I choose these, this should change between them, but it doesn't. Um, but if you go over here, two, three, and four, you have the four to choose from. And if you double click, these go off. I don't want to hear them. All the parameters down. There's all sorts of things. Let me show you a couple that are really cool I do know about. If you click in the middle, you can say insert point and it will insert. If you say remove point, it's gone, right? Let's remove all these points. No. Remove. Go away. All right, so let's just take these two. If I want curvature on the waveform page, it won't do it, right? You have to click on the nodes. <laughs> it's so tricky, but once you understand how it works, let's, let's do this. Let's insert points. We have an up, down, up, down, right? So you have to learn about the command and the option keys because this will allow you to hold down on the node. You click and drag on this after holding down either option or command. Alt or Command or Alt or the Window key, the two keys next to the space bar. The Option key on the Mac actually controls the curvature of the left side. <laughs> and by holding down the Command key on the Mac and clicking up and down, you're controlling the curvature of the right side. So it'd be nice if they did an update where they actually made it so you could just click here. But there's there's probably some reasons why they do that. But um, that's how it works. If you want to change curvatures. It's done by using two modifier keys on your keyboard. And I'll have ScreenFlow show you the keys that I'm pushing while I'm doing this so you can see. So that should give you an idea of the complexity of the oscillators. And as you can see, it's intimidating and there's a lot there to deal with, uh, a lot of power. A couple of things also you should know. Let's say we go back to the init. Let's choose a different waveform. Okay. There's a number of other different types of spectro oscillator creation. There's spectromorph, which has a whole different sound character to, to my ears, geomorph is by far the best. But geoblend. Okay, so let's go back to init because I want to cover this real quick. Okay, so we're on the oscillator page and I have Let's make this bright and buzzy. And if you option click, that tells it to go to the front. Let's go to the end. And I think if I control. I can do is option click to insert points. I guess it's on the multi segment. You Yeah. So it's different on the multi segment. You can command. Click to add segments. You can't do that to the oscillator waveforms. The only way to add waveforms here is to option click to say insert point. There we go. Figured it out, you sucker. So let's change this to be totally different sounding than the first one, right? So if I click here, let's make this different. We got this to this, right? Watch this. Hold down command, click and drag, and then let up and boom. It will vary between the beginning and the end. So you have to click and drag. So if you mess this up to be a certain place, now command, click and drag. And however far you select, if you want to just do half of it and then like do something radical for the middle part to the end, you can, but I'm going to do the whole thing and boom, it will vary it out from one to the next. 
and then you just click here and click and drag. So that's how the waveforms work basically. And then geomorph, there's spectral blend, there's all these different You want to do vocal things? Here's keys to the gain. So if you need it to be key scaled down, velocity wise, part of the keyboard, you have key scaling right here. Very helpful. It doesn't stop right here. <laughs> it goes all the way. So you can set it up so it's just one oscillator for only one half of the keyboard. All sorts of cool tricks with this. So it's very cool. And then how much velocity to gain is responding to that oscillator. So you have a lot, this is like velocity scaling. So those are all per oscillator for each of these four. Quickly, because I don't want to spend all day doing this, but <laughs> there's a lot here, guys. Let's say remove. And then if you click here, you have FM. And it's really good FM. Let's get rid of the filter for now. A couple things on the FM page you might want to be aware of. Right here, it's set to mono. Set to stereo and it's louder. And when you start doing FM synthesis, it has a lot to do with the sound of the synthesis it's gonna make. So um, we now have two. We don't hear FM2 yet because we have to go over here to, uh, it's set to inputs right now. So if I bring this up, there's FM. So this is just like standard FM, like FM8. This guy is beating up number one. And my settings for two are going to more complex, make number one sound different. You don't hear number two. It's only screwing up number one. And if you want to get more complex, you can go over here and say FM3. And now this one can be set to stereo and it's going to be fed into FM02. Get stuff like that. You play with this, you will find crazy weird stuff automatically because there's so much to it. A um, couple things you should know about. Very important. FM has its own page right here. And it's an important page because down here at the very bottom, almost hidden, is the generator for what kind of waveform it is. Uh, if you start using an FM over here, like as a sub to layer with the synth sound, you want to know about this, especially. So let's keep it right here. And so here's the standard sign. But if you click here, look at there's one, two, three, four, five. There's eight different types of sine waves. So these all come into play big time once you start turning. Now the way you typically would use FM is with an envelope. So if you click right here, and let's say envelope 2. Right? Put velocity to it. And like the trick I was talking about earlier, if you go to matrix, Check this out. Go velocity and set this sucker so that it's FM01, FM depth, FM depth. So you can bring this down some. You can get more range to the velocity. Now you could try to transpose these. It's crazy, huh? Now if you go to FMO and by changing these. I really like that. Uh, 
I save as an FM start. So I'm finding stuff and I'm going to make patches because I got more patches to make, right? So this interacts with how the FM works by what waveform the sine wave is. So make sure you know about that. It's very important. A couple more things to show you and then we're done for now. I'm going to show you the uh, wonderful abilities of the multi-segment uh, envelope. Let's do this. So if I want this to be a pulsing pad, right, or a synth part, right, doing you know, your typical thing like that, you would pick, basically go to the mixer, turn on your volume, right click, or just click on it, you don't right click, and say LFO. Go to sync and set it to gate. So it triggers all together. Now it's important, a couple things. The envelopes and the LFOs have a parameter right here which you don't see in most envelopes. You have 16 seconds or eight seconds, which means the course, how much time it takes for the envelope decay at 100% to go to zero, this is exactly 16 seconds. So if I, oh, you won't hear it because it's LFO two. So if I go at eight seconds, <laughs> And I say 100%. Eight. And it's gone. If you set it to 16, it's 16. 10 seconds. If you set it to a quarter note or a whole note, it's gone. It's based on the time of your song. So the envelopes have that. They also have a really cool ability right here. Set this back to eight seconds. And let's turn off our pulsing for the moment. Here's your decay. Right here you can choose between three different types of envelopes. Quadratic and linear don't have any parameter. Linear is more like a go, and it just, oh, it's almost really short, and it's gone. The variable slope is what you want to play with. This about it, this lets you have it be, but down here, start getting nice. Hear that decay? Compare that to this. Just goes away kind of not nicely or naturally. Quadratic is kind of the best of the both worlds. Takes less calculations, just so you know. When you go to the variable slope, it takes more calculations, which if you're using four oscillators set to 11, uh, might become a factor that you need to think about if, if you start seeing your CPU freak out. This is actually a very efficient synthesizer since it's 10 years old. All right, so those work that way. The LFOs work similarly. I, I was getting to the LFO, but I wanted to show you the envelopes first. So those are your parameters. You also have this, which is cool. This is a fade and rise. So if you set this to just a like eight, this means it's gonna fade and then rise. Back up always to 100%. You don't have any parameter control over what that rise height is. If you set this to be slower and you can hold down shift to get really slow if you want. And this is where the 8 seconds or 16 seconds is cool, because now it's doubled it, so it's even slower. Okay? And if you want to be even slower, we could say like 5. If you set this to be faster, then you'll notice it, the rise is faster. So this is the, and then this goes the other direction. Oh, that's if your sustain's up, I think. So here you can have a snappy sustain, and this will fade down. So if you want to have it either fade up or fade down with a more complex envelope. But that's not enough. Sometimes you needed to do more. So over here on volume, where it says envelope one, two, you have to just use it at envelope one maxed. 
without any fade out. And then you can use something else. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now, if I want this to be controlled with a multi segment envelope, then I'd go over here, turn down the volume, and say use MSCG1. By setting this to 100%, we're now using this. And there's a couple of things that are cool to notice. Click and drag to change the curvature automatically instead of a slider here. Also, it has these gray area up above, and that's the looping part. You can have looping envelopes just by doing that. And now if I want this to be where it goes to loops and stops and loops again, just say loop in. And like I talked about earlier, this you can control click and as you move it, it moves the segments below or after it. So you have to be aware of that and you'll compensate by going over here and putting everybody back. And let's say this is now going to be the loop end and it will move it. Command click. So now we have a pulse. So that's how that works. The multi-segment allows you to do all sorts of cool things by control clicking and adding lots of points. You can uh, get all sorts of cool rhythmic curvature things. It's quantized. Uh, the time unit is determined over here, whether it's 16th notes. Uh, velocity control, the loop. This is very cool. This is like a ratio thing. So if this is set to be an exact, get this back to be exact. This will slow it down or speed it up. It's variable, so you have to be aware of that. It's not really good for the dubstep LFO clocking from different speeds. There's other ways to do that. The ARP, we'll cover another time. You've got control over the pitch in a kind of crude way of choosing up and down here. Gate, you've got five different parts of gates. You have the length of time. It's not a timing value. It's shown by numbers. The bigger the number, the slower. So if you say four, then it's a whole note. If you say one, it's a 16th note. So just be aware of that. Here's uh, playing, enabling the steps, whether it's same, next, first, last. You have all sorts of parameters there to work with. The overall sequencer clock. Um, there's so much here, but I, I don't want to do everything. I just wanted to give you guys the basics of getting into Zebra better. So hopefully I've done that. Let me show you real quickly some patches. We've been working really hard at getting different stuff out of Zebra than we've found or heard and stuff that's more current to today's music. So uh, there's a lot of cool. Seth has figured out, oh, this is using LFOs. There's another way to do this as well. But you can see some of the stuff Seth's doing with rerouting through the three different possible bus channels for different sounds. How do you get reverb over there? Oh, can you just move it? Oh, hey. <laughs> I learned something new. You only have one reverb, but you can choose where you want to put it. So if you want it over here, or over here, or over here. If you don't like the order, you can move things around like this, which is which works. And, uh, you know, there's no audio clicking and stuff. Okay. Nosebleed. 
I did a patch like this on Razor. It's cool. That's without the rhythm, and then you just bring the mod wheel down. Uh, Pissed Zebra, you heard at the beginning. This is using the mod mappers to randomize the parameter settings for sounds such as it plays. It's different. So instead of being all the same thing, it's randomly going up and down with parameters. So, But it's great just for a single note. Love that. Spiked and nailed. Mod wheel. And there's a cool squeaky. All sorts of stuff like that. Uber builders. And right next to that might be Chilling on Mars, which is play a chord. But what's cool is this one. Oh, I don't have them doing anything big yet. <laughs> They'll come. It's just not done yet. Uh, Matrix Rebirth is cool for... Downers. Ladybug's cousin. Um, I actually checked with Howard Simon note. This is based on there's a ladybug uh, there's a ladybug's piano in the tenth anniversary. But I wanted more velocity and a little bit different character and I modified I sent it to Howard. I was like, yeah, but you gotta put pitch bin back on it so I can solo. So now you can solo. Uh, 127 shades of warm and fuzzy. Just big, but with a, an attack quality to it. I didn't want it to just be a sitting there pad. So you could play it like a piano, layer it with a piano, it'd be incredible. If I turn up this and. They're not the right octave. Never mind. Um, unstable currents. This is a cool, beautiful pad with motion that kind of grows and very way station y. I did sounds like this on the way station back in the day. Uh, this is one of the really cool. Sounds great in a mix. Uh, Theo D keys. Uh, 
I go see. So a whole bunch of cool stuff coming. Spiky Razor. This is a patch from the uh, T series for the Korg synthesizers a long, long, long time ago. Mike Peak did this for us, and it was a. So it starts, goes down, and then using that, um, I showed you about this here, this right, uh, no, where's the envelope? This right here, the, the fall or rise. All right, so later this month, Toxic Zebra is coming and it's gonna be great. For all of you with Zebra that like more modern styles of music, uh, here's a new set of patches to work with, with Zebra, 10 years after it's come out. So it's a little late in the support, but there it is. We'll have some cool stuff. So uh, there's all sorts of support. I'll do more videos for Zebra, because as you can see, it's incredibly deep. So I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching. As always, thank you for your support. You guys are awesome. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Let's go. One. I love this one. Get ready.